Anyone wondering why Bernie Sanders' socialist battle cry turned the stomach of many Americans need only look at what is happening in Latin America right now. Reuters reports Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro declared a 60-day state of emergency on Friday due to what he calls plots from within the OPEC country and the United States to topple his leftist government. So decreto, hoy, viernes, 13 de mayo, un estado de excepción y de emergencia económica constitucional para proteger nuestra patria. Aquí está, decreto firmado, aprobado y cúmplase para la protección. Maduro did not provide details of the measure, a previous state of emergency implemented in states near the Colombia border last year, suspended constitutional guarantees in those areas, except for guarantees relating to human rights. Maduro is panicking after his socialist ally, Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff, was forced to step down in what she is calling a coup d'etat. It appears Obama is forcing his hand into yet another blatant example of his long list of corporatic imperialism for the benefit of the New World Order. In 2002, Obama failed to overthrow Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. As Washington Post Scott Wilson, the paper's Latin America correspondent at the time, reported, the United States was hosting people involved in the coup before it happened. There was involvement of U.S.-sponsored NGOs in training people that were involved in the coup. I think there was U.S. involvement, yes. Maduro has every reason to believe the United States is fomenting his demise. Venezuela is sitting on the largest oil reserves in the world. However, the Venezuelan people are starving, as Zero Hedge reports, hungry Venezuelans are protesting that their children are dying from lack of food and medicine and that they do not have enough water or electricity. As against crony capitalism added, this is a country with more oil than Saudi Arabia and the government has stolen all the money and now they bottleneck peaceful protesters and threaten them with bombs or haul them to prison and torture them. As pure desperation has set in, crime has become inevitable. A man accused of mugging people in the streets of Caracas was surrounded by a mob of onlookers beaten and set on fire. Mob justice is now the supreme arbiter of who lives and who dies. In the coming weeks, Obama will likely install yet another dictator friendly to the United States as he just did in Brazil. Kurt Nimmo writes, the Rothschild-owned magazine The Economist describes Michael Temer as Brazil's unplanned president. The 75-year-old law professor who played a key role in the impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff became the South American country's acting president on Thursday after Rousseff was suspended by the Senate on corruption charges. Temer's rise to power, however, is not merely a happenstance event. It was arranged by the U.S. State Department in much the same way the puppet government was put into place in the Ukraine. On Friday, the whistleblower website WikiLeaks released an unclassified yet sensitive cable revealing Temer acted as an embassy informant for U.S. intelligence and the military. Maduro had supported Obama's approach towards Cuba. However, as the long list of fallen leaders have come to understand with either their own deaths, invasion, or incarceration, the tidal wave of the global recession has benefited Obama, offering him many disguises, but only serves one master's instructions, that of the New World Order. John Bound for Infowars.com. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea a new world order, a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used I think only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. 
Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. We are now facing a common challenge. And the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, a world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar world order. I think the new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. New World Order is the headline in the Globe and Mail in Canada. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks. <laughs> I must tell you, the right to defend yourself, the right to keep and bear arms, does not protect your right to shoot deer. It protects your right to shoot at the government when it is taken over by tyrants. These are... <laughs> the quintessential American right. The right to be left alone.